Hi everybody, my name is Daniel Blackburn. I am Assistant Professor of Soil Microbiology in Sultan Qaboos University. And today I will give you an, an update on my warm boxes. Uh, and also I will give a little bit of uh, explanation of why do I like warm composting and why do I like composting in general? Uh, what are my reasons for doing them? So let's start showing my boxes, how they are doing. This first box is the box from the Red, uh, Red Wigglers. These are Isenia Andrei that I bought the cocoons from India. Uh, and I can share the, the, the contact if you guys want to buy it. Very high quality. Uh, they arrived a month ago, a month and two days ago to be exact. And they are already becoming sexually mature. You can see the clitellum. Uh, really well developed. Uh, some of them are younger, some of them are older than one month, depending on when they hatch from the, the cocoons. But in general, very high quality uh, material provided by the, the, the company I bought. And they look really healthy. Uh, the compost looks really nice. I added more, more bedding because um, the concentration was so high, the population was so high that I, um, a week ago I added more bedding. Uh, everything I add here, watermelon, this is a banana peel, for example, they, they eat quick, so they're doing really well on this, uh, on this box. Uh, the starter bedding was gold manure and uh, peat moss. Uh, eggshells are added for uh, pH buffer and for uh, also for grit. But uh, in, in paper, yeah, uh, uh, cardboard and paper uh, in general, just to give this structure and aeration to the, to the material. So in general, they look really nice. Uh, it's a, it's a very healthy worms and they are doing quite well so far. Um, yeah. So also, I, uh, uh, from all these worms, I already extracted DNA, and we are uh, going to sequence the cytochrome oxidase gene for um, for identification uh, for molecular biolo biology identification uh, during this month. Now, and uh, uh, when I have these results, I will share with you. But the the the, the moment now, I just wanted to show you a little bit how the box is going there. Quite well. I, I'm probably gonna uh, add more, even more bedding to these uh, worms because I feel that this still I want them to have a good uh, reproduction, and uh, the, the concentration is quite high. And they will be they still their babies. They will be grow. They, they grow a little bit more than this, and the, the the if the concentration is too high, might that might play against them. Uh, reproducing and putting some cocoons out. So I expect during the next two weeks to see the first cocoons happening here. All right, so the next box I'm going to show you um, are the, the, the big worms that I, that I collected from my front garden. These worms are very avid composters. I'm adding once a week quite a lot of uh, about one fourth of the box in 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 uh, kitchen waste, including napkins and food waste uh, on this, and they are doing, this is a coffee, you can see there are coffee, rest of coffee. They really like when we, when you add the, the kitchen waste, they go on top of it and uh, they, you know, this is the part where the kitchen waste is not. The other side is where the, 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 where the fungi is, is where the kitchen waste I added like a, a, about uh, two days ago. Uh, and you will see how they are uh, on top of it already eating the kitchen waste. Yeah? Even the kitchen waste heats up a little bit, but they don't seem to care. Uh, I've been kind of overfeeding them and they, you know, trying to push it a little bit to see the limits of, of, of these worms. Uh, but they are um, doing quite well. I'm going to turn now the, the part where the, I added the kitchen waste and you're going to see they are all there. You know, two days ago I added, and all the worms are there in the kitchen waste, and they seem to really like it. Yeah, they love it. So these are very effective compost worm. I'm, I still have to see how how well they do in uh, on the long term because I haven't seen many cocoons here. So, and these are collected from the environment. 
So uh, uh, I'm waiting to see where they, uh, whether they reproduce and they maintain this population uh, in the long term. But I, I have them a little bit over two months now, and they're doing quite well. And they, the, the the type of compost they produce is more like earthy, and it seems less like uh, compost itself. It looks like uh, more. Look, it seems more like soil than compost when you uh, the, the feel of it. Uh, but in, in any case, they are uh, very avid composters and they eat really quick the, the, the kitchen waste. Uh, and they seem very appropriate. The, 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 the other small worms that I have, they're not as good as a composter of these ones, probably because the population uh, are, is not so high. The, the ones that I isolated from my indoor plants, I will show you in a bit. Yeah, so this is the, 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 the big worms from the outdoor environment. This box now is the, 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 the worms that I isolated from my indoor plants. They are very small. Uh, and the population, I, I, I added more bedding two weeks ago because it was a little bit moist. And the uh, uh, population is not very high still, but uh, Seems all right, yeah. So the blue paper, the blue cardboard from eggshells, I really don't recommend you using it. I feel that uh, it was a mistake adding. Um, and um, still, uh, the, I don't know if the, 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 when I added more bedding, of course, you dilute a little bit and you see less worms. Uh, the, uh, the population seems smaller, but, but because of the higher amount of materials, it's, it might be just an effect of just uh, a dilution effect. So I'm going to wait a, little, a bit longer and see how they do. Um, you can always see some cocoons here and there, and they're doing, they're healthy, they're doing fine. But I think these blue cardboards, are, I don't really recommend you adding it. I, I did add, but uh, I would not add anymore because if, uh, I'm a little bit afraid that uh, I, I'm poisoning them a little bit with this, uh, uh, with this. Uh, taint from the, this cardboard. Yeah, but in general, they are doing well. The population is not really so high, but you can see them in, you know, thriving. And I would just wait to see a, a few months more and see if they can uh, really act more as a composting species because they, they seem to, to live well, but um, the, the rate of decomposition of material is not as high as in the other boxes. Maybe because the population is not as high as we would need to. But anyway, we'll continue with this experiment a little bit longer and see how, how they go. So the, now I'm going to talk to you about why why do I like this uh, uh, the, the, the worms, the, the worm composting. First of all, the reason is this, there is something really satisfying in just grabbing the worms and grabbing compost. And it's there's something really satisfying in grabbing soil also. You know, and see soil on the making See how this, this living soil is happening before your eyes. This is something really amazing and, and, and really that uh, touches me uh, profoundly. It, it gives me a little uh, bit of a sense of um, uh, being in touch with nature. And, um, and this, this is following up because uh, I'm, I, I always have been a, a, a gardener. I like my garden and my garden is always chaotic. I'm not very pro on this garden is not like I'm, I'm, I'm uh, making this for, for the show or, or anything, but I really like my tomatoes, my cherry tomatoes and all the mixed plants with flowers, tomatoes, all the plants together. Um, and you can see how chaotic is my garden, but I have plants everywhere, front garden, back, back, backyard garden, indoors, uh, I have plants everywhere. So composting is um, you know giving back to the nature, making the soil alive with compost is one of the, the coolest things you can do. And it's really satisfying just to put your hands in the dirt, put your hands in the soil and see how healthy the soil is uh, and, and see the plants responding to the soil that you are making by your own, uh, by your, own with, with your uh, recycling your organic waste. And this is uh, really amazing. You can see it's very uh, messy in my garden. It's not really a, a, a reference to show you guys, but it's just uh, uh, to show that because of this hobby, this passion that you, ha that, you that I have for, uh, and my wife has also, 
for for this uh, gardening and the the worms and the composting they fits really well on this. So there on the bottom you can see this is a little bit of my the compost that I produce and I uh, and I add it to my pots and to my raised beds. Uh, and on the left is uh, a little bit of the, the manure that I was talking about. And this here on the right is my compost. And I mix it with the manure a little bit and uh, add top dress in my, in my soils and mix with my soil to, uh, to my plants. And, they, and it's really fertile. They really enjoyed it. Yeah, they really enjoyed this. Um, show a little bit more of my front garden. And um, yeah, so this is, this is actually just finalizing and showing you guys uh, the, the, the one that what you saw here on the right were bags of leaves that I collect from the neighborhood and this you know boxes of plants raised beds and all mixed together uh, food food materials and uh, food plants uh, vegetable gardens and flowers all mixed together and this is actually this is my reason for doing warm composting. I'm a, I'm a, I'm passionate about garden. I'm passionate about plants, uh, and uh, I love soil, and I love to see the living soil. And there is something really, really re rewarding to seeing this um, uh, soil uh, improve in quality over time. This is um, uh, all I have to bring for you guys today. So thank you, thank, thank you very much, and see you next time.